Ladies and gentlemen, I make a small jump because we have listened a lot of technology, variables and so on and we go now a little bit more to uh, physiology and uh, we will see it it's uh, in the same way complex. And at the end we can make a quiz and uh, I can ask you um, what we learn for variables for technology in the future from my talk. Uh, physiology of muscle 10, I hope. Ah, it works. Um, the healing of muscle injuries and also of 10 injuries is uh, important more and more because we have uh, much more injuries in the last uh, years in the professional and so in the uh, other parts of sport. And uh, healing of muscle injury is a very complex process and what we would like and also the trainers, the, the soccer for example or other sportsmen would like to have a very fast um, healing. But this is not so easy because we have a cross-reacting process with different phases and the first phase of our um, muscle injury is a degeneration process where we have a lot of processes, myonecrosis, apoptosis and autophagy, I will explain a little bit more what it is, um, which run as the first line to make the field free for the um, replacement of the tissue and the repair of the tissue. But all of these processes are driven by inflammation and this is a very important point because um, degeneration process um, is, must have an inflammation to um, solve the problem with the decrease and with the injured tissue. Macrophages come in, cytokines and so on, and at the end we get a regeneration and repair phase with uh, a lot of processes inside. And I would like to show a little bit more what happens. But before I start, and this is for me important, we should um, classify a little bit the muscle injuries because we have two big parts of muscle injuries, a structural injury, but this is really with myonecrosis and um, uh, really big um, tissue uh, destruction. But uh, this is not the most cases. The most cases are more um, in the older way functional injury, I don't like this um, word or this term, I, it, I think it's a more ultrastructural injuries. They also called um, delayed onset muscle soreness very often. But on the pictures here you can recognize that there are really uh, damages and there are really inju injuries because what you have here is on the one side the normal muscle, pre-eccentric training and on the other side 24 hours after seven, 70 second time um, eccentric training load and you see the muscle looks a little bit different. The set lines are completely uh, disarranged and this is, must be repaired. Okay, degeneration processes in the muscle if you have such an ultrastructural um, damage starts with degeneration inside of the cells and a very important process we learned a lot of in the last 10 years about uh, are the autophagy. It's a process here, it's a typical process. I have them done the pictures by myself on the electron microscope. You see uh, such an autophagic uh, body that means yeah, this debris inside of the cells, injured proteins, molecules are covered in a vesicle and then this, the, in the vesicle is solved to proteins, to peptides and so on. Okay, now to, to the process and um, this, the, the meaning of uh, um, the importance of inflammation. Inflammation is, regulates growth, promoting environment and what you see uh, is a complex uh, picture or scheme and you see inflammation, proliferation and modeling and you see, okay, all of these processes get together and crosstalk. 
and uh, it's the beginning the inflammation is a very important step. It drives all the processes which are necessary to repair and to make a new tissue. Uh, you have the macrophages which come in, uh, in the tissue from the monocytes, um, move in the tissue, in the um, injured tissue, and then you start the um, uh, phagocytosis and the debris is uh, solved, and then you have also in parallel a start of other processes, uh, new vascularization, um, muscle the tube formation and also extracellular matrix fo formation. That is very important. Uh, then the, the inflammation process moved to another inflammation process in a second phase, and this is important. Why I would like to highlight it a little bit more, if you have no inflammation at the beginning, then you have a problem with the muscle healing. Therefore, it's very, you must be uh, careful to uh, suppress inflammation at the beginning, the first days of the injury. Okay, this is a more complex picture and I will not, will not explain in details, but uh, it uh, show us um, the change of the inflammation process and the, in, uh, the um, influence on different kind of tissue repair mechanisms. I would like to highlight that we, we have a principal change from a pro-inflammatory situation in a, yeah, in a um, quiescent inflammatory um, situation. Um, and this is um, driven by a change of the inflammatory cells and the phenotype of the inflammatory cells, especially the macrophages. And at the right side, you see so it's the so-called T-Rex cells. This is very important. We know less about this, but what we know that um, uh, athletes, top athletes, have more T-Rex cells as the other normal population. And this is a very important point to, to ask if um, muscle healing is different in this. Okay. Um, muscle healing is not a process where when you have muscle broken, where the complete muscle is destroyed. The, the muscle fibers are closed at the end where they broke and then you lost not the muscle fiber completely. This is a very important information. It's often, often also asked and requested this information. Okay, what happens uh, with the inflammation if the inflammation is not running? The left side, that's the normal process, as, as I explained now. On the um, right side, you see what happens is if the inflammatory process is not well um, processing. Then you have, at the end, an autoimmune situation where the body fight in, uh, against the muscle. And uh, this is not good because you get an, uh, <coughs> at least a longer time of uh, healing. Okay. Uh, some points inside, I, I highlight the extracellular matrix. That is also a very important process during the um, healing because the extracellular matrix, this connective tissue, is, is not a, a passive structure. It's also an active structure in the healing process. And you need specific molecules um, which are released by the in inflammatory cells and by the other cells, regulated by the inflammatory cells. And only if this happens, then you get um, intact muscle fibers. In the other way, you get um, wrong um, fibrotic tissue. Okay, and for this, you need um, some enzymes, proteases, which uh, regulate this process and gives the right direction. Um, and this uh, enzymes are metall uh, matrix metalloproteases. We investigate at the moment different of this process and you uh, also the matrix metalloproteases and the release by activity. Okay, and the most important step in the healing is the activation of the satellite cells, the so-called stem or progenitor cells of the muscle, um, and uh, you have a change from a quiescent to an active cell, and then this active cell goes to a differentiation, and then it fuses with, with other cells 
or to fuse with an existing um, muscle fiber to, to make then more muscle mass and new muscle mass or new muscle uh, cells fibers. This is uh, the process, an activated cell on the left side, it's really an activated satellite cell and it's activated to an, uh, and then it's uh, fused with an uh, intact or with an uh, muscle fiber. So, and this is a process altogether. I have only shown some of the aspects and here you see the complexity and uh, of this process, the destruction phase, repair phase, remodulation phase, and the different kind of biological mechanisms. Then you thought a little bit about this and thought about uh, what you can do. And when we um, make some uh, interventions, what we change in this complex system, this is very um, difficult to do it, and um, it's the question if we do often the wrong things um, if with some interventions. The time channel, that's also often asked, and in principle, muscle is very fast um, repaired. You need 14 to 21 days up to have a complete new muscle fiber in a major way. But you have then not the um, original muscle mass and uh, therefore the process needs a little bit more longer as is three weeks, but in principle muscle is a very fast um, repairing uh, tissue. A little bit different is this process at the myotensional junction where often muscle injuries happen. Here you have an, uh, a delayed um, repair and it needs a little bit longer and it needs more than um, 30 days in the animal model, that means in the human you can say more than 40, uh, 45 days. Um, this is such a myotendinal junction where muscle fiber directly connected to the tendon tissues, the collagen fibers, and this is a destructed myotendinal junction in the repair pro process. And this comes to my, to, and now I come to the end, um, with a short view to a tendon healing and also to the phases of tendon healing. Um, tendon healing in principle has the same phases as the uh, muscle healing, but degeneration, inflammation, regeneration, remodulation. That's in principle the same, but the time is longer. But on the other side, you have more chance to, to intervene and to um, guide the repair process. Um, extracellular matrix plays a major role and also the deposition of extracellular matrix plays a very important role here, an example with tenacin C, a uh, key molecule in this process. And you can change, and this is the, the point, what I would like to point out, you can change this process by mechanical loading. That means in repair process, um, of tendon healing needs also, at least in some situation, um, the right and tensional loading. Um, but not in all cases. If you have a bone, uh, tendon to bone um, problem and uh, rupture, then it's more, um, to, you must be careful with tendon uh, stress but if you have a normal tendon stress, if you have a um, rupture of the Achilles tendon, then uh, in the middle, then, more, then it's, it's fine to start with uh, um, tension load in a defined way. Okay, that's a little bit an inside of muscle and tension, uh, tendon healing. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bloch. <laughs>